I'll start with traditional public relations. Actually, this is public relations. This, these are the prominent features of public relations as we know. And public relations is a two-way communication process. Okay, so what we mean by two ways is that we send a message and we receive feedback about the message. Uh, that makes the communication process two-way. And public relations is also a strategic management function. That's very important because in an ideal world, uh, public relations, the head of the public relations department is directly connected to the head of the company, the CEO. So uh, the PR professional plays an important role in strategic management and decisions of about the company. And the third uh, future is the, that the success of PR campaigns largely depends on the identification of the target group. Target group is the key word for PR campaigns. It's very important to identify who we are sending the message to, and that's very important for public relations. And fourthly, the messages PR sends to the target group should always be the truth. That's very important as well, because uh, because of the nature of the profession, let's say, it's very um, it's not very difficult to lie sometimes, to distort the truth. But in an ideal world, I'm saying again, uh, PR always uh, says, tells the truth. And PR is a profession that needs to be realized by specialists and professional practitioners. Uh, you may see people uh, saying that, like, I'm involved in the PR business, and sometimes just because they're beautiful, they're model, or they're organizing small events, but that's not uh, what PR really is, and we're going to talk about it in a minute. And lastly, PR campaigns need to be based on continuity. That means if there's a campaign or it has to be in line with the strategy of the company, it has to be in line with the communication strategy as well, it has to be sustainable in itself. Uh, so the continuity and the fact that it's continuous is important. Thirdly, uh, in our third slide, uh, I'm going to talk about digital public relations, like what changed. As you can see, I, I, I've uh, had them all in red, uh, it hasn't changed a lot. The way we realize digital public relations is different, but the essence of the business remains the same. Uh, it is still a two-way communication process. It is still a strategic management function. It still uh, depends on uh, the identification of the target group. It is still very important. We should still tell the truth. And it still needs to be realized by specialists and professional practitioners. Actually, now it's even more important. And it still needs to be based on continuity. I'm going to talk about uh, them one by one. Uh, why do we say it's still a two-way communication process? Because uh, the notion of feedback has changed with the rise of new technologies. But now it's more important. Like The way we receive feedback from the target group has changed because we receive it instantly. Uh, when we have a campaign and the target group, our uh, receiver of the message, sends us instant feedback. So. Uh, it is still a two-way communication process, but feedback is even more important and more dangerous. A digital public relations campaign should encourage further community interaction. Interaction is very important because if we want to be successful uh, in digital world, we have to take uh, care of the interaction. We need to control it, although it is like uncontrollable in itself, but uh, we need to be as careful and as planned as possible. Once you share your message with the public via the channels you have selected, note that it is no longer totally yours. This interaction cannot be controlled. You lead, you try to lead and channel it for the benefit of your organization. But we all must almost aim, always aim further interaction. It is still a strategic management function because uh, it is important to consider public relations as a vital part of the management. I told you before, uh, in an ideal world, yes, public relations is very important for the companies, but uh, we see that when companies do not give the importance that it deserves, that public relations deserve, they uh, most of the time fail in their communication process. So if you give it the utmost importance, it will be easier for them to handle the communication process. 
This doubtlessly means a lower likelihood of crisis, a situation most organizations fear the most in today's world. Like all of the organizations, if they're on social media, uh, it's easier for them to face a crisis and to avoid it. The best way is to have a good public relations management. And the next one is uh, the success of PR campaigns still largely depends on the identification of the targets. Actually, social media has also changed the concept of target group. We said that it has changed the notion of feedback, but it also changed the target group. In traditional public relations, it's easier to identify a specific target group and target them via messages specifically created for them. But today, the content you create must appeal to multiple values because you must address to different target groups. Whatever you publish on social media will be visible to everyone, so you must make address to different values with different, slight differentiations in the message, channel or engagement techniques. Because what you do is visible to everyone, you cannot control it in most of the social media tools, that's why you have to be careful about that as well. And yes, it still needs to say the truth because uh, we, like most of the people, some people uh, summarize the public relations as strategic communication management. And of course, this is supposed to include the truth, even when the organization you work for is in trouble and like it's uh, easier for you to lie or to distort the truth. But today it's uh, easier to reach and find the truth, find out the truth. That means truth is even more important today because especially in times of crisis, uh, it may seem useful, more useful and easier to make a distortion of the truth in favor of your company. However, do not forget that any distortion of the truth can easily be found out and this could lead to bigger, bigger crisis. This time you could need to handle the fact that uh, people do not believe in you. They will be more doubtful about your uh, company, what you're saying. Uh, this time it will lead to bigger crisis. And I'm so sure you have seen it all on social media. The company does, does something, it leads to a crisis, and it says something, it tries to make an explanation, but it doesn't uh, make sense to people because people know the truth. They can reach it to the the truth themselves already, that means uh, it, it, it is about to face a bigger crisis, right? And the next one is the fact that PR, digital PR, is a profession that still needs to be realized by specialists or professionals. It has always been an important issue in this field of public relations because any acts of hospitality or customer relations or small publicity events cannot be con considered as the essence of this profession. But do not forget that this is supposed, supposed to be a holistic strategic management function. There needs to be a strategy, future-oriented plans and campaigns. This means that there's a serious need for public relations pro professionals who are experts in the field. Now that the concept of public relations has changed with the arrival of new technologies, new platforms, it's even more important to have the necessary skills to be more competitive, rather more relentless and risky to serve in this platform, in this like business environment. And of course, there still needs to be uh, the idea of continuity in public relations campaigns. Actually, now it is like it has a different meaning as well, but it's still continuity in itself. The strategy and plans in public relations should always be integrated and in line with companies' vision and mission. You cannot consider a single campaign or project by itself. It has to be considered within the communication strategy and business plan of the company. Another significant point is sustainability. Uh, this year, I'm going to present a paper in Uprera about creativity and pu digital public relations campaign. And we have studied and we have found out that a key word for digital public relations is sustainability. If the campaign is planned in consideration with sustainability, even when the campaign is over, it can be continued with a very little budget since the instruction it creates is through creative content, which is transmitted through creative channels that do not require big budgets. This sustainability may be one of the greatest advantages of social media, and the campaigns where this is taken into account may be more likely to succeed. 
And now that I have given you some of the futures of uh, digital public relations, uh, I hope you have an idea about what it is. And now we're going to talk about how to create a digital public relations campaign. Of course, I cannot give you like like all the details in 40, 50 minutes, but I'll try my best. And I'm going to talk about them one by one. And if you have been to uh, our session in summer camp, I have talked about something similar, but I have uh, mentioned the first two steps only. I haven't mentioned uh, it all. If you missed it, no problems. You're going to have it here. If you were there, no problems again, because I'm going to tell something new. And now that we have uh, talked about it a little bit, uh, we're going to talk about the public relations campaign with an emphasis on digital science. First step is uh, setting measurable goals. That is very important. Measurement is the keyword. I'm going to repeat it again and again throughout the uh, presentation you'll see. Uh, because research uh, is one of the key elements of public relations campaigns. Unfortunately, it is usually ignored or little invested because public relations professionals who are not experts enough in the field uh, may not be aware of the fact that research is the key to the success today. Uh, and they may ignore it, and this leads to unsuccessful PR campaigns, to, uh, which nobody pays attention to. And research is to be done before, during, and after the implementation of uh, the public relations campaigns. And digital public relations today is closely related to data analysis. Uh, data analysis may be scary to um, many, uh, because like it is still experimental, like everybody talks about it, but nobody knows what it is. Uh, they are still trying ways to analyze the data that is found on the internet, uh, and it is data analytics refers to qualitative and quantitative techniques and processes used to enhance productivity and business gain. Data is extracted and categorized to identify and analyze. Uh, behavioral data and patterns and techniques vary according to organizational requirements. In short, it is a process of inspecting, cleansing, transforming and modeling data, uh, trying to discover useful information and suggest conclusions and uh, take into consideration in decision-making process about the communication strategy. And many concepts such as social media measurement or web analytics are, take, are to be taken into account before planning a campaign. For further information, you could take a look at social media uh, measurement ways online. If you Google it, like social media measurement tools, you'll see that there are many tools. I'm going to give you some names here. And they help you analyze and understand social media flow. There are some, also some other social media monitoring techniques like sentiment analysis that could help you with a deeper understanding of online data. So when you see a tweet, uh, uh, you try to analyze it in terms of sentiment, like what people want to say, like deeper meaning. Uh, even with one tweet, you, you can try to read it in many ways. That's why this social media flow is not very easy to analyze, but there are some tools that will help you with it. And I have listed some of them here. We have Google Analytics, you know it uh, probably. We have Spring Metrics, Vupra, Clicky, Mint, Chartbeat, Kiss Metrics, User Testing, Crazy Egg, and Mouse Flow. Uh, as far as I've seen, these are the most used ones uh, and useful, considered useful ones by people. Uh, you could take a look at them, try to understand how they work, and maybe use them in the future. And thanks to these uh, social media measurement tools, you don't have to have a professional data miner to get the answers to your questions about the latest trends, tendencies, and preferences. You can get real-time converse, conversion and analytics, top converting sources, keyword analytics, landing page analysis, email performance reports, and simple points and click configuration, and take all these collated data into consideration before planning. Uh, if you like have a problem and you want to lead a public relations campaign on it, first it's better to have the research, like what do people think about it? And today it's like really easy to have this data from uh, social media platforms, so these uh, tools would probably help you with that. 
And the second step is uh, developing a campaign. And here, one of the keywords is coming up with an effective strategy. And here, I'm going to talk about content, communication messages, strategy, channel, and creativity. Uh, and please do not forget that if you're trying to plan or create a campaign, it should always encourage further community interaction. Once your message, uh, once you share your message with the public via the channels you have selected, note that it is no longer totally yours. This interaction cannot totally be controlled. You can lead or channel it, but uh, whatever you do, you must always aim positive further interaction. And these are the things I'm going to talk about. Uh, firstly, I'm going to talk about content. It's mostly user driven. Uh, it's like the content is also created by the publics you're trying to reach. So as the company, as the head of the department, as the PR department, you do not create the content yourself anymore. It's not like creating a report and handing it to the other organization. You have content with public and uh, start waiting for positive feedback. The feedback you have in some ways there are some strategies but the content is uh, uh, created by you but by the target group as well this is like one of the prominent features of social media and it's very positive and of course risky and here I think it's also important to mention that the content you create should always be based on factual information you can use reliable information taken from reports by prestigious institutions, or you can conduct your own research and base your content on it. Uh, if you Google digital PR campaigns online, you'll see that most of the digital PR campaigns today derive from uh, reports, derive from give you numbers, percentages, and it makes you, of course, um, believe in the campaign because there are numbers. And the content you create must also appeal to multiple values uh, because there are more than one target groups, uh, as I told before. And whatever you publish will be visible to everyone. Do not forget because that's very important. So you must take make address to different values with slight differentiations in message. And when it comes to communication messages, it's important to have the message simple and memorable. And the message created for the campaign should also be original, adaptive, because you need to adapt it throughout the campaign, uh, new and functional, and potentially useful, because if you try to make a difference in your campaign, like what makes your campaign different, of course, the target group will be tempted by the fact that what you're saying is useful for them. And... While creating a message, uh, try to connect with everyday meanings and practices. Address things that matter for everyone. You can also connect with multiple publics with environmental, economic, or health concerns. And the tone of the message is also very important. Social media messages can be more conversational and hence engaging. Depending on the campaign, you can make use of uh, different engagement ways to draw attention. You can be conversational but still serious, you know, and that will uh, be like, uh, I don't know, more reachable for people, right? It's, it, it will be easier to reach you. And campaign strategy needs to be sustainable, but I, I, I believe I talked about sustainability already. Uh, and when you come to channels, I think that's, again, very important to choose the right channel because uh, you can see that uh, social media like is like a cloud, is like a white cloud, but it's very important to use it effectively. And this also uh, means that you have to choose the right channel to uh, reach the people you want. If you say, oh, I'm going to use social media in my campaign strategy, I'm going to use Facebook, Twitter, it's not enough anymore. You have to have that strategy specific to channel as well. And creativity, why 
why is it important? Because uh, you need to say something new in your campaign. Like it has to be interesting, it has to be attractive people. And in a world where everybody sees millions of things uh, every day online, uh, you have to make a difference. And I think the, the way to make a difference is through creativity. And public relations uh, practitioners need to achieve the first step of creativity through brainstorming, focus groups, and which is another way of research as well. Uh, they need to develop new ideas for public relations campaigns, which can also be a unique yet an old idea reproduced in a new context. And also outcomes of these ideas need to be useful for significant groups such as customers or clients, depending on uh, who you are targeting. And a key characteristic of successfully creative campaigns is how they engage people in different ways. All online text should be accompanied and embedded, uh, I'm sorry, accompanied by images and embedded videos. The images that are linked to popular culture, social meanings, and everyday life provide talking points for people, which means interaction. All in all, the campaign should be integrated into everyday life through engaging strategies. Stories of ordinary people will be more engaging, and it will also need to self identification, which can also be the keyword for interaction, which you're aiming. And yes, I talked about channels, but I may have forgotten to say it. Uh, when you consider social media and when you're planning, uh, when you're trying to have a, a public relations campaign, it will be never enough to make your plan as use social media accounts effectively. It doesn't mean anything anymore. There are many social media channels. and. After careful consideration through measurement, you could decide which channel to use for what purposes. But all in all, your final aim is uh, to develop a network of advocates through your stakeholders. This means uh, in times of crisis, these people, these, this target group you have reached and received positive feedback and gained their loyalty, will be speaking in your name. When there's nobody to talk to, they will be speaking in your name, and that's very important. And this will, boost, this will not only boost your reputation management, but also play a key role in terms of crisis. Uh, when a crisis occurs, people will start talking, and control the content uh, could be impossible. However, online ambassadors, these people uh, whom you have gained, whom you have won, let's say, online ambassadors that will talk in your favor could stop the rumors or at least make them less out of control. You might have seen these people, for example, when there's a crisis in a country like uh, or a company, somebody says, like, but I do believe in that company. I do like their products and everything. So uh, while everybody's talking negatively of the company, somebody starts speaking positively. And of course, the this um, attitude changes the way we see that company. So creating these online ambassadors, these advocates, uh, is very, very important for a company. And the third uh, step after like planning, uh, after research and planning your campaign, the third step is spreading the message. And the message created for the campaign, uh, original, adaptive, I told that, uh, new, functional, and potentially useful, I remember saying that, with a campaign that revolves around such a powerful message, it is easier to create interaction that would lead to positive feedback. Now you're spreading the message. And creating while creating and re realizing a plan connected everyday meanings, I remember saying that as well. And at times of crisis, that's very important, choose to tell the truth and adapt your techniques. Reconsider your strategy and act quickly because there may be crisis, there might be trouble. Uh, like it's very like you know possible in today's world. And choose to tell the truth always and adapt your techniques. It's important to reconsider the strategy and adapt it. But it's very important to act quickly because you see that uh, while sometimes some companies are very um, let's say they're not quick enough to respond to the crisis and this creates a space that can be filled with misinformation and this is the beginning of a bigger crisis for the company and of course one of the biggest advantages of 
the digital world is speed. So you choose to use it as an advantage and respond quickly because if you fail to react, somebody will respond in your name and you wouldn't want that. An adaptation of the digital public relations plans could only be possible thanks to the continuous assessment and highly qualified professionals. I talked about the qualified professionals already, but continuous assessment, it still goes on. It's not enough to have the research before the campaign. It's important to have uh, the research, like what people are thinking now about your message, the message you have sent uh, during and after your campaign, of course. Uh, that is why measurement throughout a campaign is as important as public relations professionals who are well aware of the fact that what they're doing could change the destiny of the organization they're working for. Sustainability is still crucial uh, as adaptation, and it is noteworthy to know that there are some issues to be sustainable about. For example, always telling the truth, no matter what, continuously measuring, whereas there are some other issues that uh, you may consider adapting, for example, reaching different targets via different channels. You've sent a message and you've seen that it's not um, received enough by the people. You can uh, try another channel, uh, additional one, or you can, if there's a, a fault somebody has made, of course, you should try apologizing. This is uh, adapting your strategy as well at all, a little bit. And now I'm going to talk about two digital PR cases. Uh, one of them may be, um, may, you may know already because I have mentioned it in my summer camp uh, session because I love it. It's my personal, personal favorite of the recent times. And the first one is uh, by Hilton Hotels. Uh, this is a digital branding campaign that combined media relations, social media and clever content marketing. Uh, and they wanted to engage a target demographic uh, as young professionals. And realizing that the young professionals workforce uh, was experience, experiencing a holiday deficit, that uh, means they didn't go on holiday enough because they probably didn't have a time. Hilton's campaign centered on vacationitis. So they made up a disease, a, a fictitious disease, affecting overstressed workers around the world. First, they created a microsite uh, to determine how sick someone was. Uh, there was something like a test or cartoons you could uh, decide uh, the level of your sickness. And then they provided custom prescriptions, each of which involved staying at Hilton Properties, of course, because if you wanted to cure your disease, you need to go on your holiday and stay in one of the hotels uh, the site offers you. And taking this, their strategy one step for, further, Hilton also partnered with The Onion to develop cartoon illustrations that depicted the symptoms of vacationities. I'm going to show one of them in a minute. And then they incorporated these images into an ebook. Uh, distributed to media following the campaign launch. And they also had uh, social support and they had a pop-up stunt and influencer outreach. And they have had a very successful campaign. Uh, they had uh, more than 100 media placements and they also doubled their Facebook fan page and they have added a new 7,000 newsletter subscribers and uh, more than 50,000 people visited the site uh, right after it launched. And these are the cartoons. Uh, for example, we have the fear of cubicles here. They have made up a name for that. And maybe you have it. <laughs> uh, and this is the microsite they have created. So you... Um, when you uh, go online, you see that there are levels of the sickness and you see if you're sick or not. Of course, like many of the people were sick, I guess, because we all suffer from this disease. We can't go on enough holidays. And in the end, um, the solution is that you go on a holiday. And here is uh, the YouTube video. I think you could try uh, seeing it after the presentation. I don't think I'll have enough time for that, but it's really fun because there are like facts about the campaign as well. And uh, this is uh, Paleski is uh, an important name for the Hilton Hotels. I guess he is one of the directors. 
and he said we needed to convince our already loyal customer base of traveling professionals to view the brand in a new light and increase their awareness of the brand's leisure offerings and wider association with leisure, particularly with the US and the UK and Latin American consumers. January through March is traditionally a weaker travel period. The brand understood the challenge this posed in encouraging consumers to book travel uh, during this time frame while also convincing them that taking a break or a vacation could be good for them. So they created the uh, campaign uh, taking this into light. So they had the problem. They wanted uh, more people to go on holidays, especially their target group. And they created the campaign. It's a really uh, fun one. Let me see how, if I have more slides. No, I don't have. But please go online and uh, See if you like the idea. And this is my personal favorite. I have shown the video in summer camp. And this is Great Chinese Names for Great Britain. Uh, this campaign is created to attract Chinese visitors to the UK because they have their problem that not enough Chinese people are coming to their country. So they wanted to make the country attractive for them. And they launched this campaign, uh, which is really funny. And uh, they have seen that there is that intense competition to attract Chinese visitors to the UK. And uh, despite China being one of the UK's fastest growing source markets for inbound tourism, Britain has lost market share to key competitors like the US and Switzerland over the recent years. So they have had their, they have identified, they have defined their problem. And there are two primary audiences which visit Britain targets in China. So this is the company that have created uh, the digital PR campaign for Visit Britain. Uh, actually, it's not a company, it's a part of the government. <laughs> and they are young, wealthy, independent and open minded groups that have the means and interest in traveling to Europe and therefore are key targets for Britain. So this is the target group of the campaign. And research, I have had it in red because I have mentioned that research is important for digital PR campaigns. So they had their research and found out that Britain was perceived as not sufficiently welcoming, ranking the 14th among 50 countries. Uh, the UK's stringent, uh, stringent visa policy was the key contributor to this, because there's that visa for Chinese as well, as well as a lack of trade communication tailored to Chinese audiences. So the campaign is not uh, like, you know, the right one for Chinese audiences. They have found out that. So they decided to have one for Chinese only. They have defined their target group. And Chinese tourists saw Britain as emotionally as well as geographically distant. A campaign was needed that bridged this gap, and Britain needed to step down from its ivory tower and speak the language of the Chinese tourists. We needed Chinese to engage with Britain in all new ways, and they have created this great Chinese names for Great Britain. And in this ad, it says, for centuries, the British roamed the world, uh, slapping English names on just about everything. Now it's your turn. You can give names to places in Britain. So they have started this campaign and Chinese people started to name uh, places in Britain, like, uh, for example, very, very famous roads, very famous uh, squares, and they have given names to them. And the uh, aim of the campaign was uh, the fact that Visit Britain wanted to present Britain as a welcoming destination and stand out against messages by competing tourist nations. The solution was to earn interest through engaging content by invite, inviting Chinese people to plant the Chinese flag and rename places just as British explorers did for centuries. This is, uh, I mentioned it, I guess, uh, this is like reproducing something old, uh, an old value, the fact that British named many places in the world. So they are reversing it and they're reproducing it in a new way, in an unconventional way. This campaign engages the target group, that is Chinese people, in such a way that while taking action and having fun, they also want to go further and probably visit Britain, which is the main aim of the campaign, main goal. 
And this is the success of the campaign because we have some numbers. This is like after research, after the campaign, post research. More than 13,000 names came in. Millions spoke about the campaign online. These posts have been seen by more than 300 million times on Weibo alone. And marketing director of Visit Britain said Chinese consumers are at the very heart of this campaign. So it was important to give them the opportunity to create history and build an affinity with Britain they have never had before. We made sure the campaign was fully integrated around a strong social idea that will connect the Chinese with Britain and get the whole country talking. So over 2 million people visited the campaign pages. 27 million Chinese watched the launch video, over 80 earned and paid KOLs covers an overwhelming majority of influencers in China, and over 260 media released reports about the campaign. That's a very good success, right? And they also had their PR value over 15 million, and they have also won two awards, two gold and one silver at Cannes Lyons 2015.